Welcome to What the Flick, everybody. A, uh, another, uh, we're into fall. We are into the uh, prime uh, movie release season. It's prime. Yeah. Um, uh, and, uh, <laughs> and two, uh, well, one series movie. This week? Uh, this week, yeah. You mean Jackass 3D? Jackass 3D. So we're going to, you know, we're dispensing. Jackass 3D. We're going <laughs> to dispense uh, with all the other reviews. We're going to spend 20 minutes on Jackass 3D. We could, actually. Um, There's a lot of stuff in there. Um, a lot I of penis. I a lot of naked penis. I haven't seen it yet, but I have spent a great deal of time <laughs> listening to uh, Johnny Knoxville and Steve-O promote it on various outlets. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel as if I've seen it. But I'll see it. Have you seen it? I have not seen it yet. All right. Let's get on with the serious business. <laughs> uh, Matt Atchity from uh, Rotten Tomatoes. Welcome. Uh, Christy Lemire from the uh, Associated Press. Hi. Um, uh, two movies the, this week, uh, Clint Eastwood's uh, Hereafter with uh, Matt Damon. Uh, and then we'll also uh, get to uh, Red uh, with everyone. Uh, led by Bruce Willis, but an all-star cast. Right. Yeah. All right. So we'll uh, we'll start with uh, uh, hereafter. Uh, Eastwood uh, and again, Matt Damon. Uh, Eastwood directs. Uh, Matt Damon, uh, the star, but a very sort of three stories woven together. Uh, Matt, uh, tell us about it. Matt Damon plays the adult version of uh, Haley Joel Osment from The Sixth Sense. <laughs> he sees dead people. Oh wait, that's not exactly what this movie is about. But he has a past as a psychic. If he touches someone, he can see beyond the veil to dead people in someone's past. Uh, it's a gift. He calls it a curse that he's abandoned. He's no longer interested in doing those readings, but his brother and his, and his brother's friends want him to do readings. Uh, that's just one of the stories, though. There's a couple of other stories happening, one involving a French journalist, one involving a young boy, uh, but you should probably watch the trailer. Seems fair. I don't even do this anymore. Your brother, I'm telling you, he's trying he's really for real. You need to make money doing this. For a while, I had an office, a website, newspaper articles, even had a book written about him. So what happened? Couldn't go. Can I ask you a question? The job I had before was as a psychic. Do the work and you go by. What do you think happens when we die? Send a hope upon a word. I recognize you. You're that psychic. I have news for you. I don't do it anymore. Uh There you go. There's a little glimpse at uh, at hereafter. Um, uh, you mentioned it, uh, Matt. Uh, uh, three uh, different stories. Uh, I thought uh, woven together uh, skillfully. Uh, you, did you? I, I did. I you know I I found myself early on in the film thinking that there's it was going to be maybe a stretch. You know, one character's in San Francisco and a character's in England and a character is in. France, and I thought, you know, I, I, how is he going to loop all these together? But you know what? After immediately having that thought, I, I thought, you know what? I'll, Eastwood will show us. I, I'm fine with that. I, I trust him enough as a director. He's skillful enough. You know, I will say that the movie takes its time. It's not urgent. There's not a sense of urgency to it. It takes its time. It's a thoughtful movie, but I'm okay with that. It really does spend its time really kind of getting inside some of the characters' heads, and, and you really start to feel what they're thinking. Uh, it definitely takes its time, um, uh, which I, I, I agree with you that that's not a, I don't think there's really any criticism in that. What's interesting is that it starts off uh, with a bang, with a big special right. effects uh, bang, a, a tsunami. They're in Indonesia. It is, a, 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 so obviously, and some of the shots are literally right. the, some of the YouTube shots that, uh, that we saw. And so for the first, I don't know, 11 minutes of the movie or eight minutes, a serious uh, action movie. Right, absolutely. It was very serious. And then, you know, you get to see the, um, I can't remember the actress's name, the French journalist. Cecile, Cecile de, de France. France? Yeah. Uh, you Christy, see you her. That right? Cecile de France, for those of you keeping score at home. Yeah. Yes. You, you <laughs> see that she has a near-death experience. And then the other story, one of the other stories we get is this young boy, well, these two young twins. And it's not giving too much away to see, you know, because it's about one of the boys the older of the twins dies and 
what happened in the By movie... By the way, I love the phrase, the older of the twins. Well, he's they 12 minutes old. Yeah, no, 12 I, minutes older, they make a big deal. I, know, I just it. wanted in case people are like, the older of the twins, they're I, twins. But yeah, right. right. It's minutes uh, we're talking about. Right. Um, what I thought was weird, or what actually kind of got me about the movie is after the tsunami scenes, and you see the scenes with the twins, and if you've seen any of the trailers, you know that one of the twins is not going to survive. You know it's going to be a story about the other twin yeah. brother having to deal with this. I started getting the sense, I almost started to feel like it was Final Destination. Like at any moment, this twin brother was just going to get it out of nowhere. That and he was going to, oh, oh, I see, the, just, the, the twin who did get the, it. The twin, right. And, oh, okay. you know, uh, and, and it took a little, bit, a little bit longer well, than I know, thought before he actually did get it. You know, it's interesting. That's you, kind of a that weird. You bring up, uh, You're sick, dude. Yeah. I am sick. <laughs> it's bring, Halloween time. <laughs> you bring up. Uh, by the way, Christy not participating in the hereafter uh, review. I'm recusing myself. Yeah. I have to recuse myself. I apologize. Um, but uh, I'm going to take part later on. Uh, because she's uh, friends with a uh, Bryce Dallas Howard. <laughs> no. <laughs> we were sorority sisters. <laughs> um, uh, She's like this with Jay Moore. She is. Uh, uh, I follow him on Twitter. Uh, Clint Eastwood is actually a friend of Christie, so she is uh, sitting out the review. So. Um, uh, you know, you mentioned Final Destination, which was, by the way, ridiculous. Um, but uh, uh, what I what I was struck with, among the many things, I was moved significantly at various parts in this movie. Really, significantly moved. At, I must have been seven or eight times. But you know, when you talk about people who connect with the dead, which is what Matt Damon does, instantly I want to roll my eyes because instantly it's a very easy uh, pattern in Hollywood to get into sort of supernatural nonsense. But this stays unbelievably grounded and totally credible. And in fact, when Matt Damon explains how he got the gift, even that, you're like, oh, right. that's great that they did that and sort of gave it some, and I never felt that this was weird in any well, way or that they were exploring something that I would have trouble believing because uh, logically and scientifically, it, it wouldn't. It doesn't make any sense. You know, and one of the things that's that I think was very effective is that Matt Damon's character early on mentions that to his brother that this is a curse, not a gift. He doesn't like this. It, it really twists him up. And then we see him actually let his guard down with the girl that he's interested in, played right. by Bryce Dallas Howard. And you see that whole progression. You see him give her the reading, and bring things up out of her past, and it's just devastating to her. And you see how she now can't handle any type of relationship with him. And it's really sad. It's really heartbreaking. And I thought that was very effective. Yeah, I, I thought it was very effective. I thought, I, I didn't, I, I thought everything was very effective. Um, a couple of interesting things for casting. First of all, and I think everybody, we're getting a general consensus of this in the world of film criticism. Uh, Matt Damon knows what he's doing. Um, right. Uh, and he can do a, a, a lot of different roles, and he can make you forget very quickly. I'm a big George Clooney fan, but George Clooney has trouble escaping being George Clooney. He just, he's, you know, he's so pretty. I, I will say I did uh, have a moment, though, in this when, as Matt Damon's walking around London trying to find someone, I thought, you know, Jason Bourne would have figured this out in about 30 <laughs> seconds. I, um, I, I don't know. I, I think that he can play a, a sort of every man incredibly effectively. And, uh, but then some other interesting, first of all, and I thought Cécile de France was fantastic. I thought she was great, and there's a, she plays a French journalist. She's involved in the tsunami in the beginning. There I thought was a great, and I hope it was an intentional Eastwood moment, um, that uh, she does, she's, she's very popular in France, and in fact, she's the face of the Blackberry right. ads in France. And you see an ad, she's with her boyfriend, and she sees the Blackberry ad, right? Right. Or maybe she's not with her boyfriend, it's irrelevant. But she sees the ad, and we see the ad, and the ad looks better than she does. Like, right. the way it would. And especially because the first shots of her, when we first see her, uh, on vacation in Indonesia before the tsunami, it's very tight on her. And we see, this is not a, this woman's not 28 years old. Like, she's a grown-up. Right. She has some lines to her face. She's beautiful. She dropped dead gorgeous. And then we see that ad, and I don't know, and then she's made to look well, like she's 27 I, and just got out of grad school, and I don't know. I just thought that was, all of a sudden, it really, you know, there's a credibility there that Eastwood manages to find. Well, I took that ad as almost a symbolism of a, of a snapshot of how, of her and her life before the tsunami, before her yeah, sure. experience. Well, I'll buy that too. I'm not, uh, and I'm, I'm, what I'm saying may also be nonsense. Uh, real quick, couple things. The, the George and Frankie McLaren, is that right? I'll go with McLaren. Yeah, we'll McLaren. accept that answer, yes. They are, uh, they played the two brothers. You mentioned that one of them is killed. That's the whole point of the movie. We're not giving anything away there. Um, and uh, so 
or one of the points. Uh, so what was interesting is that these guys, they played both brothers. Both right. of the twins, the real life twins, played both brothers. Uh, I don't know. That's because he, 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 Eastwood can't have done that accidentally, you know. And so, but yet it's not that really the child labor laws, right? I don't know. One of them had homework that day. Well, one of them can work while the other one's. <laughs> I mean, you can only work a certain amount if of time. If you know that, it so feeds into the idea of how connected they are. Right. That either one can be the other, and the other can be the first. I don't know. I thought it was impressive. And then uh, the screenplay is from uh, uh, Peter Morgan, who I was like, oh, what else has he written? Because I, and, <laughs> I mean, a couple he, things. Right. All these, <laughs> all these wonderful uh, political movies: Last King of Scotland, uh, Frost Nixon, and another one. The Queen. The Queen. The Queen. Um, Two-time Oscar nominee, Peter Yeah, Martin. so, uh, and then all of a sudden he's writing something so very different. Yeah. And I thought I, it was incredibly well written. Well, and it's, and it's an interesting take, I think, for Eastwood, who, if you look back at his filmography, there's not a lot of kind of paranormal stuff in there. Yeah. Right? Or big special effects scenes. Or big scenes. special effects. So right. we had the special effects, and then that's it. Mm -hmm. And then there's no more special effects. Right. That's it. That's, I, that's the extent of it for the first eight dramatic minutes. I do want to minutes. bring out two things. One, I think it was very bold that fully a third of this movie is in French with subtitles. I thought that was a very bold move. Rather than do the thing where you can Not make quite your, a third, I wouldn't say. Well, but, but a, a significant, significant portion yeah, sure, of sure. one of the main characters, most of her dialogue is in yeah. French. And I, you know, a lot of filmmakers would say, okay, we'll just switch and just do it in your accent and do it in English and it'll be fine. I didn't, she was, I was totally into this girl. Uh, Made mm -hmm. no difference. But I have to say, I hated the ending of this movie. I hated the way it ended. Hated it. Really? Hated it. Did you hate the ending of I, Shawshank Redemption? Uh, I did not. All right. Well. I hated the ending of this because I guess it went over my head and I didn't understand it. I felt I. I, felt I don't know very whether I understood it. I didn't spend a lot of time thinking about whether I understood it. I was just moved. I I felt very. I I felt very much like, I felt very really unfulfilled in the ending. Really? Yeah. All right. Well. You're wrong again. I, wrong again, as usual, Bob. As, um, as usual. All right, so that I but I won't be that, janking up the score. That tonight. affected your rating. I appreciate. Yes, it did. It, did. Right, so it brought you, it down, got? actually. My rating is a 6.5. 6.5, that's it. I, I really like this. Uh, I gave it an uh, 8.2. I thought it was outstanding. Um, uh, I think that it uh, is among uh, Eastwood's uh, best. I don't know where you'd rank it, but it's certainly one of his quality films. Not that there are a lot of, but, you know, it's better than Changeling, <laughs> um, which I also like. Uh, Christy, you uh, you're, you do a five most list, or a five best, or a five something, a list of five every week for the Associated Press. Um, like, you know, you'll do the five best horror movies when some horror movie comes out, that kind of thing. And so you did, you talked to Eastwood, or you got from Eastwood his version of his, the five best movies he's directed, the ones he's, that he likes. Right. Um, he's directed like three dozen movies, something like that, over the yeah. past 40 some odd years. And so I asked him, you know, through email, you know, what would you pick? What are your favorites among the films you've directed? I'm totally fascinated by this. Yes, and um, I kind of had hoped that he would pick some weird stuff, and he didn't really. He picked the stuff that is his most acclaimed, but he explained in little paragraphs with each, each selection why the script called out to him or what great anecdote he had from it. Um, he actually picked six. What are you going to do? Say no to the man? Right. I mean, Sorry, I sure just said five. To, yeah. Clint, read the email. Come on. I said five. Obviously, he, he was feeling lucky. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh. cute. So, um, so his picks Don't are... Don't encourage that. He, um, <laughs> he didn't put them in any order, so I just did them alphabetically. He did Bird, Letters from Iwo Jima, um, Million Dollar Baby. This is the alphabet, which is tricky. Unforgiven's in there somewhere. Yeah, definitely Unforgiven's <laughs> in there. Outlaw Josie Wales is uh, in there. Outlaw Josie Wales is in there. Mystic River. And Mystic River, which yeah. comes after a million dollar baby. So, yeah, that's, that's sick. So those are the ones he won his Oscars for, Unforgiven and uh, Million Dollar Baby won Best Picture. He won Best Director for those. And so, but Bird was a very personal one because he's a huge jazz fan, so he loved Charlie Parker. And his, uh, his score in this uh, film is good also. I mean, he does it himself. And yeah, I thought it was particularly good here as compared to... Uh, um, a Gran Torino, uh, where it was also good, but it seemed uh, it, it seemed more like, hey, here's the score with the song. This is very it, subtle. This was very subtle, and mm. I thought uh, I thought impressive. And it, you look over his work, and there's so many movies that get no acclaim from him that I like. So, like uh, True Crime, by the way, True Crime is great. Space I mean, Cowboys. Space Cowboys is <laughs> I like Space Cowboys. But I like Space Cowboys. That's the thing. I like Space Cowboys. But True Crime is dramatic and exciting and good, and I. Uh, and I like the book, and I like the novel, and then I like the absolute power. Mm. Um, 
you know, so I, I don't know. I just think that there are, you know, his duds are are pretty good duds. Well, I think the way he explains it, because he has made so many movies, he's made like, what, eight movies in the past seven years because he did Flags of Our Fathers and Letters from Iwo Jima back to back. Um, I think he sort of feels like it, he's a tour guide. And he's going to show you different stuff. Yeah. And maybe you'll like some of the stuff and maybe you won't. If you don't like this, there's something else coming up. So I think he, that's how he views the eclectic nature of his filmography. And he's not done. His next movie is uh, Hoover. Hoover yeah. with Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, all right. So uh, anyway, the fascinating Christie's uh, uh, five uh, most, which is six, six. Uh, from Clint Eastwood yes. and, his, and largely in his words. Um, all his words. All his words yes. uh, available uh, online. It's out there. Uh, and it's uh, uh, fascinating. Nice job on Thanks. that. Thanks. Um, uh, all right. So uh, we got the overall score then uh, for uh, uh, Hereafter is a uh, 7.4. Um, and uh, I think that's uh, too low. Because, uh, <laughs> it should have ended better. Matt was uh, tell, whining. Tell him I said that. Uh, yeah. No, don't. Yeah. <laughs> Clint Eastwood is uh, far older than I am, and can... he could kick my ass yeah. nine ways to Sunday. He's 80. I, he could still beat you up. I, easily. Yeah. I would not even break a sweat.